If you've ever wondered what it would be like to creep up on an unsuspecting animal and enter it from behind, then may I suggest you find another website, and perhaps a psychiatrist. But for everybody else with a cleaner mind, I present to you Space Station Silicon Valley, a 1998 platformer developed by DMA Design and published by Take-Two Interactive. As many of you will know, DMA Design are better known as Rockstar North these days, but long before Grand Theft Auto fame, the studio released some of the coolest games on Nintendo 64. Space Station Silicon Valley is a concept so bizarre and unique that it very could have easily become a dud in the hands of a lesser talented studio. Thankfully, it's quite the opposite, and aside from being one of my all-time favourite N64 games, it's also a complete hidden gem, and one which you really need to be playing or buying right now. The game's storyline centres around a space station which was launched in the year 2001. It was designed as a technologically advanced amusement park, although personally I think the easiest way to think of it is as a space zoo. Seven minutes after it was launched into space it went missing and totally vanished. Its designer, Professor Cheese, also mysteriously vanishes. Fast forward to year 3000 and it reappears. The problem is that it's hurtling back towards Earth. With disaster fast approaching, the world sends two hired heroes to save us, Danger Dan and his robotic sidekick Evo. Our two hapless heroes crash land on the space station, destroying an imminent romance between a sheep and a dog in the process. Evo is also blasted into pieces on impact and all that remains of him is his microchip. However, things on the space station are not as they seem. During the thousand years the park was missing, the animals it once contained have evolved and merged with technology which has created cybernetic animals with crazy abilities. Playing as Evo in microchip form, it's up to you to jump into the bodies of animals in each of the game's 30 stages and spanning over four worlds to complete the missions given to you to find out the secrets of the space station. So after such a crazy storyline, you may have been expecting another cute Mario wannabe or a Banjo-Kazooie rip-off platformer, but you couldn't be further from the truth. Space Station Silicon Valley is a platformer with brains, in a sense that the entire experience is deeply rooted in puzzle solving, but it also has fun with it because there are many times when the gameplay will break into a style totally unexpected. Each of the game's huge levels have set tasks you must accomplish, but figuring out how to achieve them is a different matter altogether. This is not a simple task of going from point A to point B, or collecting a certain number of objects. You'll need to carefully think about what animals you will need in order to process them, and which animal attributes you need to complete your tasks. Every level has plenty of animals to possess, and some you'll need and others will be less useful. With each of them having two unique skills, you'll sometimes need to think outside of the box. For example, in one of the early levels you'll need to get four sheep into a pen, so you need to find a dog which can bark in order to herd the sheep into the pen. On later levels, things can be more complex, such as needing a hyena to laugh at a hippo to piss it off or finding a mouse so you can enter a small maze to flick some switches. The number of tasks you have on each level varies, but you'll always need to be thinking ahead and experimenting with animal abilities. It's the animals themselves which provide a lot of the game's sense of fun. They're all excellently designed and due to them having different skills and attributes, you'll need to invest a lot of time simply playing around with them and seeing what new areas you can reach. Part of the game is also exploration based. You can zip through some of the levels, but to gain high scores there are energy and point bonuses to collect which are sometimes tucked away in hard to reach areas and require certain knowledge of the animals to reach them. As expected, the animals such as the elephants are slow but can take a lot of damage, and animals like scorpions are fast and weak but are prone to being killed easily. The game does stick to quite a generic zone format as you have the oasis, desert, jungle and arctic areas. However, this is one time when it really allows the game to work as the animals you get to play as are based on the zone you are in. The gameplay is also broken up with some random gameplay styles. These are usually at the end of each of the zones and include everything from kangaroo boxing, where you take your mechanical roo and run the gauntlet punching camels until knockouts, all the way to taking aerial animals on flying missions as you go through rings. These aren't mini-games as we're used to from modern games. They all feel fitting and have a purpose within the game and don't feel tacked in or forced. Graphically, the game is certainly great looking, but in no way does it surpass the quality or finesse of platformers from either Nintendo or Rare. There is no expansion pack support, however what the game visually lacks in detail, it more than makes up for in style. Everything in the game just wants to make me smile. 
The environments look the part and nice details such as being able to see the glass dome reflections when you reach the edge of the levels are very cool. The design of the animals is nothing short of inspired and you can tell that the studio must have had a lot of fun coming up with these wacky animals. Ever wondered what a farting rat would play like in a game? Or how about racing as a motorised walrus in a wave race knockoff segment called Wall Race 64? Space Station Silicon Valley is just packed with intelligent nods and it doesn't take itself too seriously at all. There are times when the game suffers slow down and unfortunately this is in the later levels when generally you do need more control. It's a rare occurrence and doesn't ruin the game but when it does happen it can lead to a cheap death. There are also rare occurrences where the game will not run if you have an expansion pack in your console. Again this is extremely rare so don't think you have a broken cart if you need to restart it occasionally. A big problem however is a major bug in the game which was never discovered. It prevents you from collecting all of the souvenirs in the game which you'll need to see the game's proper ending. By doing this you'll also unlock a bonus level, but thankfully you can see both of them using cheat codes on the level select screen, but it's a shame they missed this one in bug testing. The game's controls are thankfully very tight, but it will take some getting used to. With all of the animals handling differently, you'll need a little time to fully understand how each moves and so on, but this is all part of the fun. You will rarely die a cheap death from poor controls, and so for an early N64 title I was surprised just how well DMA nailed the control system. It's easy to pick up and really shows that this was built for Nintendo's console, as a later port of the game to the PlayStation just didn't handle as well. Rounding off this retro masterpiece is the sound, which is quite frankly brilliant. It's a mix of futuristic pop sounding tunes, and in a cool twist, the level complete tune can actually be found in Grand Theft Auto 2 on one of its radio stations. The sound effects are also top notch and add a great level of humour into the game. From the motorised rumblings of the walrus to the meek sounding bars of the sheep, everything just draws you into the creative feel of the game and rounds off the total package the cart contains. Some magazines and reviewers of the time noted that the only thing the game was lacking was a multiplayer mode. On a console designed for multiplayer gaming it was surprising perhaps, but I think the game wouldn't have worked in multiplayer so I'm glad they didn't try to force in a weak multiplayer mode just to advertise itself as a multiplayer game. Space Station Silicon Valley is a game you don't come across all that often. It's so fresh and unique that going back to playing it for this review it just reminded me of what I love about gaming. In a world full of generic first person shooters and games which take themselves far too seriously, this reminded me of a time when more studios took risks on new IPs, and as gamers we got to try some of the most creative games ever played. Even with incredible reviews, Space Station Silicon Valley hardly set the world alight in terms of sales, but the fact I loved it 16 years ago and I love it even more to this day just shows what a great experience the entire game is. The game has quite the cult following online it seems, and I'm just one man with one opinion, so now it's over to you. If you had this game as a kid, what do you remember about it? I always love hearing your memories of games, or maybe you picked this one up recently based on the unusual title and agree it's a hidden gem. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and I'll reply to all of you as always. And until next time.